I'm Julia Longoria. This is More Perfect. The Supreme Court holds a special place in the American imagination. For a lot of us, it starts... in high school. I visited East High in Denver, Colorado. Mini constitutions. To hang out with their constitution team. These kids have named their pocket constitutions. Okay, hers is Connor the Constitution. I'm sorry. The team competes in the national We the People competition where they're asked to argue about the Supreme Court in legalese. Yeah. Let's do it. One, two, three. <laughs> it's like the nerd Super Bowl. You may begin. In the 1803 case of Marbury v. Madison, the Supreme Court proclaimed it is emphatically the... I know this because I, too, was this cool in high school. So the Supreme Law of Land, they are not higher law. Okay, great. My constitution team from an all-girls Catholic school in Miami, Florida, we were good. We made it all the way to nationals. And just like the Supreme Court, we had our minds focused on the 4,543 words of our pocket constitutions. What is joy for the high school nerd if not something to memorize? an ideal of justice to fall in love with. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Heffernan. Where, where my very first tour guide to the Supreme Court was my high school government teacher, Mrs. Heffernan. The Supreme Court has always been my hero. She's a bit of a fan. I was like a cheerleader for the court. <laughs> protected you from discrimination. In the Supreme Court, according to Ms. Heffernan, if you have a problem that democracy can't solve, you can appeal to the court to swoop in and serve justice. The Supreme Court always represented the little guy. At least that was the hope. For me, the romance was about what happened in the courtroom. Growing up in a pretty conservative bubble, and going to college in a liberal bubble, the Supreme Court really did seem like it could be a place above politics, where you could actually listen to two sides of an issue truly discussed and debated, deeply and earnestly. That felt really hopeful. It was always the court who ignored the majority and said, okay, you know, we're not elected. We're just going to interpret it based on the Constitution. But I think that, you know, that has, that has changed. The Supreme Court has been pulling crazy bullshit forever. One 11th grader I talked to had no such romance. And people like to say that it's so much worse now. But if you sit and, like, maybe try and think, then you recognize that, oh my gosh, they have been cycling out crazy opinion after opinion since f-ing forever. Today, it's hard for the Supreme Court to maintain the air of grandeur and mystery they might have had in the past. There's a bunch of things kids could point to. My favorite is that one time, early in the global pandemic, when the Supreme Court tried working from home. What the FCC has said is that when the subject matter of the call ranges to the topic, then the call is transformed. Someone, maybe a justice, forgot to press mute while flushing the toilet during a live-streamed oral argument. Like, they're people too, and of course they can be swayed by different things. And then, somebody leaked a draft of one of the most polarizing opinions in recent history. I think the media coverage on Roe v. Wade made me, you know, pay more attention to the courts and their decisions on a a bunch of different cases. Take a look for a moment at this eight-foot security fencing going up all around the court. Same kind of fencing put up around the Capitol after January 6th. It's a sign uh, of how deep 
and sharp the divisions in this country are that have been deepened. While we grown-ups are compelled to make up our minds about the Supreme Court in this moment, they're either restoring justice or destroying America. High schoolers, these rough drafts of human beings, are still just trying to figure out what they believe. What do you think of the Supreme Court? (laughs) I think there's definitely flaws. I do not think that people that are not elected by citizens should make decisions for citizens. Oh, but if they're elected, then that would make them pretty political. So I just uh, realized that. (laughs) Yeah. Today, it seems strange to me that like these nine people go up and decide what is and what isn't not just constitutional, but like right and just. So this season of More Perfect, we're taking a cue from the high schoolers and we're questioning everything. The Honorable, the Chief Justice and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. What is the Supreme Court for? Who is it for? Is it a place above politics where you can get a fair hearing? The number one thing for me was just how warm and respectful the people were, whether they agreed with you or didn't. Or is it an anti-democratic branch of government that needs to be tamed? Will this institution survive the stench that this creates in the public perception We're going to try to make sense of this current moment on the Supreme Court and ask, what is justice in America? Who gets to decide? And should it be this way? From WNYC Studios, this is More Perfect, Season 4. God save the United States and this honorable court. 